Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of I Can't Believe That Happened, a 10-minute history podcast for kids and curious adults. So today I'm recording especially for July 4th, which, as many of you know, is our Independence Day from Great Britain. And I wanted to look into maybe some figures that I had personally never heard of before. So today we're going to be talking about Mercy Otis Warren, a playwright, historian, and a whistleblower. So a quick reminder is that every episode I try to throw one wrong fact in. And this is specifically to, well, keep you on your toes. Just because you heard it on a podcast or read it in an article doesn't necessarily make it true. So if you find the wrong fact, please find the correct fact and send it over to me and I will mention your name in the next month's podcast. All right, so Mercy Otis Warren. Surprisingly, in all of my years of researching history, I have never heard of her. She had published plays and pamphlets and was the first real history book about the revolution that was ever published by an American. So who was she? Why was she so important? All right, now this is the crazy thing. I did a lot of research for this, and I have three birth dates for her. She was either born on September 14th, 7th, or the 28th, depending on the research. And she was born 1728 in Massachusetts. Now, she had 12 siblings. She was the third oldest. And here's the important part about all this. She had privilege where she didn't have legal privilege or any legal standing, She came from a family of money, learning, and the impressive belief that women had intelligence that should be nurtured. Shockingly, this was not a normal belief at the time. And she was very educated at home. And she had the privilege of wealth, which at the time meant books. Now, her uncle's library was completely open to her, and it wasn't like it is now. There weren't public libraries. Libraries were things that were held by the very wealthy, and that was only available to the people in their sphere. Okay, so her father was in politics and was an attorney, and he, along with her brother and uncle, nurtured her incredible love for writing and learning. And Mercy ended up marrying one of her brother's very good friends and a classmate at Harvard. Now, he was very politically interested, uh, James Warren. And again, this is a very unusual thing for the time, but he very much encouraged Mercy's writing. Now, as he became a state legislator, it allowed Mercy a eye and ear into politics that she would not have ordinarily had. Not only did she have access to people, she had the ability to listen to what was happening and what was coming next. Now, Mercy was really interested in writing. She wrote poetry under her own name, again, very unusual. But she also published a lot of work that was not was done anonymously or under a man's name. This was not unusual. What is fairly unusual is we're starting to actually find out that she had published more than we had ever thought. Um, But she was very interested in satire. Now, the difference between satire and humor is satire is usually about pointing out the ruling class, the powerful, and poking holes in that and punching towards that and... Her work was very political and smart and funny and created quite a stir in the colonies. There was already a lot of tension, but she was all about fanning those embers. Arguably, one of Mercy's most famous plays was called The Adulator, and it was explosive. It became the talk of the town. And she called out what she saw as being oppressive British rule in the colonies and even foretold a bit of the revolution. So it was published anonymously, but it really fanned the flames that were already starting up. Then she leaked letters proving that a very powerful man was actually working for the other side, which was pretty dangerous. Now, she did publish some of her work under her own name and... Most of the work was published anonymously under a male name. Again, this isn't very strange. 
But what was different were her friendships. She was very good friends and had a long letter writing history with the future president, John Adams, and his wife, Abigail. Now, John Adams was very well known for absolutely adoring his wife and her intellect, and that seems to not just be about his wife. He really did appreciate Mercy's intelligence and her way of writing. And although later they did not stay friends, he really felt like she did him wrong in her history. (laughs) Before then, during the Boston Tea Party, he was quoted as saying in a letter that he wished that there was a poetical genius such as Warren to describe the recent events in Boston Harbor. Now, this is really important, not just because Mercy is a woman and that she was um, very intelligent and well-read. The other part of this that I think is really important to look at is how important our stories are and how important well-told stories are as a call to action. While Mercy Otis... Warren was very much a part of the revolution. That does not mean she co-signed everything. She was absolutely livid at slavery. She thought that it undermined everything that the Constitution and the country stood for. She was also very upset at how First Nations people were treated. And as you might imagine, she and Abigail Adams both shared the utter incandescent rage at there being no legal or political place for women in the Constitution or in the Bill of Rights. Now, she then wrote a book after the revolution, and it is considered to be one of the First, it is the first nonfiction book written by a woman in America, but it's also considered to be one of the first books about the revolution to be written by an American in America. And that book was called The History of Rise, Progress, and Termination of the American Revolution, published in 1805. Again, John Adams, not happy with how he's portrayed. George Washington was not alive to state how he felt about things, but she did have some rather... Um, harsh words for him, and also a lot to be said for some of his good points as well. All right, that wraps us up with Mercy Otis, Um, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. It is not as um, what I usually talk about, but especially at this moment in history, I think it's really important that we talk about stories. True stories, absolutely, but how our words and what we say, even when we don't have the standing and the power that we hope we should have, that our words matter and stories absolutely matter. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. We are a baby podcast. And if you could just take a moment, if you enjoy this, to please share this episode with your community. We don't advertise. So all of our listening is done. Thanks to you and your sharing, which I deeply appreciate. If you could go over to Apple Podcasts, it's still the best place to do this and leave us some stars and some reviews. That really does help us out a whole lot. If you would like to see our show notes, please head over to our show notes. I have everything written down, including the bibliography. Please visit us at owlentwine.com, also for my children's books and illustrations. And I do believe that's about it. I think we're hitting the 10 minute mark. If you have any episodes you would like me to do, if there is a historical figure or a subject you want me to talk about, please send that over. I love hearing from everyone. And again, thank you so much. And I will see you all next month.